Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. UAE Foreign Minister meets Indian counterpart in New Delhi to Boston ties. Pakistan orders probe to investigate leak of tax records of Army Chief. And Sri Lanka's national inflation eases to 70.6%. And now for all the details, UAE's Foreign Minister Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan on Tuesday held talks with his Indian counterpart S. J. Shankar in New Delhi to bolster ties. The two leaders reviewed progress in bilateral cooperation, especially in trade, investment, education and food security. Foreign Minister of the United Arab Emirates Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan held bilateral talks with his Indian counterpart S.J. Shankar in New Delhi on Tuesday to bolster ties between the two countries. Zayed landed in the Indian capital on Monday for a two-day visit to the country. During their meeting, they exchanged views on various global and regional issues and appreciated progress in bilateral cooperation, especially in trade, investment, education and food security, Jay Shankar informed on Twitter. Earlier in June, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi met UAE's President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zahid Al Nahyan in Abu Dhabi to pay his condolences on the passing away of former pro-West President Sheikh Khalifa bin Zahid Al Nahyan. India and the UAE signed a landmark Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement in February, which is expected to increase the total value of bilateral trade in goods to over 100 billion US dollars and trade in services to over $15 billion within five years. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's finance minister has ordered a probe to investigate the leak of Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa's tax records. The order came after a digital platform published a shocking report that revealed that there has been a sharp rise in the wealth of close family members of Bajwa in a span of six years. Pakistan's finance minister Ishak Dar on Monday ordered a probe in leak of tax records of outgoing chief of army staff, General Kamal Javed Bajwa and his family members. In a sharp statement, Ministry of Finance called the leak of information unwarranted and illegal and said Dar has taken a serious notice of the violation of the confidential information. The ordered probe will be done by Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif's special assistant on revenue, Tariq Mahmood Pasha. The development comes after Pakistan-based digital platform Fact Focus in a report shed light on sharp price of wealth of General Bajwa's close and extended family members who became billionaires during his tenure as Army Chief. As per the report, in a matter of few years, Army Chief's immediate and extended family members started a new business, became owners of farmhouses in prominent Pakistani cities and bought foreign properties. The report was supported by tax returns and other financial statements of Bajwa and his family members. With clouds of uncertainty over his successor, General Bajwa is set to retire on November 29 after serving a tenure of six years. The office of Army Chief is termed the most powerful as military has directly ruled the South Asian nation for almost half of its 75 years history post-independence. Moving on, residents of Gilgit Baltistan have lamented government's apathy and failure to provide them basic amenities amid the onset of winters. They said a ban on cutting trees for basic needs along with prolonged power outages has hit them hard, while blocked roads due to snowfall have also cut off many remote areas. Locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have raised concern over lack of basic amenities and infrastructure to tackle the winters and snowfall, which every year leads to blockage of roads, cutting many remote areas. 
They lamented that they are facing power outages on daily basis and the Pakistan government has even banned the cutting of wood for heating and other needs which has added to their woes. They said only non-government organizations are coming forward to provide them relief with their daily necessities and they are getting no relief from the government. तो यहां तकरीबन गवर्नमेंट ने लकड़ियों के ऊपर भी काफी वो किया हुआ है पाबंदी लगाई हुई है लोग मसूर हैं परेशान हाल हैं लोकल्स इन गिलगित बल्तिस्तान हैव लॉन्ग ब्लेम्ड पाकिस्तान्स इलीगल ऑक्युपेशन हैज पुश्ड गिलगित बल्तिस्तान इनटू द मोस्ट नेगलेक्टेड बैकवर्ड एंड इंपॉवरिश्ड रीजन इन साउथ एशिया पाकिस्तान्स इनडिफरेंस टू द रीजन इज आल्सो रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द फैक्ट दैट इट इज लार्जली ट्रीटेड एज अ कॉलोनी एंड डज नॉट हैव अ प्लेस इन एनी गवर्नमेंट फ्रेमवर्क a Taliban-led Supreme Court has confirmed 19 people were publicly lashed in northeastern Afghanistan this month, among the first major signs of the ruling group applying its strict interpretation of the Islamic law to criminal justice. A report. 19 people were publicly lashed in Afghanistan's northeastern Takar province this month, the Taliban Supreme Court said on Monday, among the first major signs of the ruling group applying its strict interpretation of Sharia or Islamic law to criminal justice. After consideration and a strict Sharia investigation, each of them were sentenced to 39 lashes. Supreme Court spokesperson Malvi Inayatullah said, adding that nine women were among those lashed on November 11 after Friday prayers on the order of provincial courts. The Taliban Supreme Spiritual Leader Habitullah Akhunzada this month met with judges and said they should carry out punishments consistent with Sharia law, according to Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid. Other countries have been scrutinizing the Taliban's track record on human rights and women's rights since they took over in August 2021 after a two-decade insurgency. No foreign government has formally recognized the Taliban's administration and many have already heavily criticized its reversals on signals they would open secondary schools nationwide for girls in March. Public lashings and executions by stoning took place under the previous 1996-2001 to rule of the Taliban. Such punishments later became rare and were condemned by the foreign-backed Afghan governments that followed, though the death penalty remained legal in Afghanistan. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's statistics department has said that the island nation's inflation rate slowed to 70.6% in October after a record 73.7% jump in September. The island nation has been struggling with soaring inflation for nearly a year, partly triggered by its worst financial crisis in seven decades. Sri Lanka's statistics department said on Monday that the country's National Consumer Price Index, NCPI, slowed year-on-year year to 70.6% in October after a record 73.7% jump in September. In a statement released by the Department of Census and Statistics, it is noted that food inflation was 80.9% in October, while non-food inflation was 61.3% in the crisis-struck country. Central Bank of Sri Lanka Governor Nandalal Virasinghe predicted that if the current trend of monetary policy was followed, inflation could drop to 4 to 5 percent by the end of the next year. He also said that the country needs to implement budget proposals and reform measures to help stabilize its economy and ensure it does not return to crisis. In an effort to tame prices and stabilize markets, the bank has raised interest rates by 900 basis points this year. Its final policy announcement for 2022 will be made on Thursday. In September, Sri Lanka reached a preliminary deal with the International Monetary Fund for a 2.9 billion US dollars bailout, but it needs to get its debt on a sustainable track and put its public finances in order before funds can be dispersed. Sri Lanka was battered by COVID-19, which slashed tourism and remittances from workers overseas. It was then hit by rising oil prices, populist tax cuts, and seven-month ban on the import of chemical fertilizers that devastated agriculture. Moving on.
on to news from Nepal. Hundreds of devotees celebrated the Bala Chaturdarshi festival and offered lamps in the Bagmati River in remembrance of the deceased family members on Monday night. The festival is believed to provide salvation to the departed souls. Devotees in Nepal celebrated Bala Chaturdashi and offered lamps in the Bakmati River in remembrance of departed family members on Monday. It is believed when lamps are floated on the river, it lightens the world of departed souls in their afterlife. Devotees remained awake throughout the night camping on the edge of Bagmati River, facing the Pashupatinath temple and chanted hymns of Lord Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction. I have been here for three years. I have been here for three years. I have been here for three years. I have been here for three Rati Bati Valio and Ili Chaturhi Gundi Satya, Chaturhi Garni Biostam by Data. Ra you Bati Kare Puleru Tarinza, you take Pul Tarya Vanzanelai, you Tangana Kukar and say, Te Pitri Eru Mokshaun Wari Wata Pari Pugun, Banagalagi, Pul Tarinza. The festival is observed on the thirteenth day of the dark moon in November, December. Devotees maintain strict fasting with only one meal that day and abstain from garlic onions and food items that are said to be impure. The next morning they take a holy bath and the rituals end by visiting Pashupati Nath temple premises and spreading seven kinds of grains along the way. If myths are to be believed, a trader Balananda who visited Pashupati became demon-like and he was killed by his friend Brisha Sima on people's request. Filled with remorse, he prayed to Lord Pashupati Nath and was guided to perform the holy ritual, which was later named as Bala Chaturdashi. And in an attempt to connect the younger generation with the Persian language and scholarship, an art exhibition on the personal archives and books of the Persian poet Muhammad Amin Darab was displayed in India's Jammu and Kashmir. From 14th to 19th century, Persian emerged as the language of administration in all types of writing in Kashmir. In a bid to educate youth about the rich Persian culture of India's Jammu and Kashmir, a seven-day exhibition was organized recently which displayed rare manuscripts of the famous 20th century Persian writer and poet Khwaja Muhammad Amin Darab in Srinagar city. About 73 rare manuscripts of Darab were exhibited during the event which included 11 books, a chronogram of Neil Armstrong's moon landing, a congratulatory message from Srinagar businessman to Dogra Maharaja Hari Singh on his accession to the throne in 1923 and several works of prominent scholars. This exhibition, we have not thought that it will be so capable of the tariff. Because when we came here and these small things, which the computer has not noted, but it is in the papers, we can see that this is a Nika Nama, or even Neil Armstrong, or Divane Sahib. We can see what was our culture of our culture. Which we, yes, of course, the young generation is forgetting. We didn't know this. We are the first time coming and we are knowing their songs, their poetry, their prose. रोज कलेक्शन देख रहे हैं तो हम ये अंदाजा लग रहा है कि इन्होंने कितना काम किया है और छुपा हुआ था ये काम। In the Kashmir Valley from the 14th century to 19th century, Persian emerged as the language of administration and all types of writing, including historical, literary, and religious. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. UAE Foreign Minister meets Indian counterpart in New Delhi to Boston ties. Pakistan orders probe to investigate leak of tax records of Army Chief. And Sri Lanka's national inflation eases to 70.6%. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.